Good morning, everyone. I'm freshly washed and feeling very well rested. Um, Ali has been away for the end of the weekend and Monday and Tuesday, he's back this evening. So I'm gonna be putting the house back together. Um, but I do get some very, very good sleep when he's not here. <laughs> It's been joyous just spreading out over the whole bed. Um, I have washed my hair this morning as well and um, plaited it to the side just so I can get all of my beauty bits done because I thought I would do a bit of a beauty video, like really, really focused, kind of, I don't know if this is old school, maybe it's old school, I don't know, but um, just talk you through some of the things that I've been using recently. And um, I know that I've been getting loads of questions about like my makeup, and hair and things like that so hopefully I'll just cover everything. I have a day at home today because I have a call shortly. Um, it's more of like a design based call and um, it's it's been like a bit of a process and I was working on something over the weekend and just brain farting all over the place and this is going to be a bit of a meeting about that. I hate being ambiguous like this and evasive of the topic this was supposed to have been announced already but i think that it's one of those things where for me it's more important that it's just done right and so yeah we've got another meeting design based meeting and hopefully we'll have a few more answers at the end of that meeting but yes i'm going to crack on with my beauty bits and pieces this morning now i took a couple of weeks off from using my kenzie device because i was in italy for a while i got a good good amount of sun and i just wanted to let my tan settle a little bit um, but i am back on my routine and it's really established itself as part of my beauty routine if you don't know i've been using my kenzie device over the past few months to combat um, excessive hair growth, which is something that I've battled with my entire life. I have had laser hair removal, I've tried waxing, I've tried, um, I sh shave, all of those kinds of things. And it's definitely something that I've had to make peace with, that it's gonna be something that I continue to upkeep throughout my life. I use my Kenzie device to ensure that as little of my hair growth is coming back as possible. And I use it once a week. I basically use it without any attachments on it. And I use it in areas that I feel like I need to focus, like my underarms, maybe a little bit of my face, um, things like my toes. Honestly, I wish there was girls talking about hairy toes when I was growing up, because for me, <laughs> hair has been such a huge part of my life. And whilst I'm really happy that I have the hair that I have, where I have to manage the hair growth, in this this capacity but it's been a process of finding what works and being able to focus on the sort of long-term hair growth with my Kenzie device at my own pace what I was struggling with with like laser appointments was that it was taking up two hours of my day it was um, half an hour to the salon half an hour back and now I'm able to fit the, the hair removal side of things around my, my day. So if I'm sat watching a film or something like that, I can just work my way through my legs. Or if I'm listening to a podcast, it's a great thing to do whilst, I've always said this, but it's a great thing to do where you don't need to have your brain focused on something so you can listen and your, your eyes can be focusing and your movement can be focusing on something that isn't quite so like, uh, what's the word? engaging if that makes sense it's a great two birds one seed which is a saying that i got from one of my followers on one of my recent videos which i loved um so i use it for that combating the hair growth under my arms and i have seen a noticeable difference in the regrowth how soft it is how much slower it is and it's just something that I'm able to upkeep week on week as part of like my big pamper of the week. So if I'm having a shower and I'm doing like my hair wash, my scrub down, I know I'm getting rid of all of my fake tan, etc., etc. I'll then go in with my Kenzie and I'll use it as part of my sort of pamper morning. If you're interested in trying the Kenzie, I will pop a link in the description box down below. My code is LEM20. It will get you 20% off. If you think about the price versus like laser hair removal, it is such a competitive price and it's something that can obviously work around you as well um, but this is the thing that I really love because I feel like I'm getting two devices in one is that it has these attachments and you just pop them on the end and this one is focused on um, combating the signs of aging so whether you have age spots 
fine lines, just a little bit of skin rejuvenation. This is my favorite of them all. When I'm like looking at my skin and I'm like, you're looking a little bit sallow, especially after like traveling or anything like that, just giving my, my skin that added bit of oomph. The glow is almost like instant. I actually can't believe how quickly it works. And so that's probably the thing that keeps me picking it up. Um, I think with hair like regrowth, you can sometimes think, ah, I've reached a good point with it. But this is like addictive for me. When I notice my skin is looking sallow, I'm like, right, plug in the Kenzie. It's, it's pamper morning time. <laughs> So I just, there's also one for acne, which obviously I'm not using, but the the focus for me is really the age defying one. I've got um, one stubborn age spot, which I've spoken about you for a long time. And that's really where I'm um, focusing a lot of my efforts. And now that my tan has faded after being in Italy, I'm gonna continue on that train, but I've, you've noticed and I've noticed the very, very clear differences in the intensity and the color of this particular age spot on the side of my face. If you watch my videos regularly, you'll probably have seen me do this many times, um, but I'm just gonna give a once over of my face. So I do from about sort of here by my nose all the way down um, under my chin and then I do this little section above my forehead but I try and like cover my eyes as much as possible because I want the glow there as well. It's as simple as turning it on and firing it up. You then select the intensity. I've been using this loads for months. It's only in this short period where I've had a tan that I've just given my, my skin that time. Um, so I know what my skin is capable of. So I'm gonna go in quite high and just give it a once over. I usually just hold it down and move it around my face. That just seems to be the quickest way. So I just hold down on the top. I think for me, it's that instant pinkness that you can see that you know that you're doing something because you can't feel anything. It's completely pain-free. There is absolutely no like pinging or pain in any way, shape or form. But straight away afterwards, my skin almost feels like it's just given given a new, new lease of life with it and it feels a lot pinker. It could just me be, be me being excited, but I just always notice that there's a little bit of glow straight afterwards. Then I simply remove the attachment and use it to go over any of the areas of unwanted hair that I have. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a top lip jobby and underarms because that really is my focus at the moment. My legs, I just kind of upkeep as and when I need to, but I may, sit down and watch a film this evening and do my legs but I've got to get on with the rest of my day. Again select the intensity. What I really like is for my uh, underarms to just look as much like my skin as possible. I used to have a really bad like grey area under here so this is just helping me to keep that at bay and again I just hold it down, make contact with the skin it is that quick and super easy, all from the comfort of your own home, pain-free, convenient, fits around you, and has saved me so much time. Right, I need to carry on with the rest of my beauty routine, but I just wanted to give you a quick reminder of my discount code. It is LEM20, and it will get you 20% off the Kenzie online now. I'll pop the link in the description box. Um, I'll pop the code on screen, and hopefully you can make a nice amount of saving. I am now going to get some moisturizer on my face. This is the Elizabeth Arden Advanced Ceramide Lift and Firm Day Cream. I am utterly obsessed with this. Um, I use this every single morning and it just gives my skin like an instant glow whilst also having all of the benefits of the Elizabeth Arden Ceramide range um, in a beautiful, beautiful formula. I am, as you can see, running very very low and i always feel like that is the biggest testament in the in this day and age of beauty that moves so quickly um to use a product and actually finish it and love it in that capacity is yeah i think it speaks for itself should i do my hair first or should i do my hair afterwards um i have washed my hair as well by the way so i um washed with the uh, hair burst curly like it's like it's kind of like their curly girl method um, shampoo and conditioner and I've been using that instead of using the for longer stronger hair like duo because obviously I was growing my hair but now with my bonds I need to be careful that I'm using sulfate free so that it doesn't break down the bonds and 
quite honestly, it has been such a shock because I let my hair dry naturally um, when using it and I couldn't believe the curls in my hair. I'm gonna have to show you in another video because I've blow dried it out now. But my hair goes so curly, it's unbelievable. So if you're looking for a good curly girl method shampoo or just to enhance your natural curls or you want something sulfate free because you've got extensions as well, I'll pop those in the description box. I've also just popped in some of the hydrating um, soothing balm from Hairburst as well. And I've also got my three more inches oil because I replaced it after my travesty. Although it has been leaking in my bag. I'm like, no, I need to be able to like travel with these things. And if it's leaking, now I only pop this on the like top layer of my hair because because my hair extensions are essentially a different type of hair they try and get it as close as possible obviously but my hair is incredibly coarse um i don't put it on the actual lengths of the extensions because they're so soft already they just don't need it whereas my hair needs a little extra to keep it looking beautiful a little bit of the Chantecai eau de rose de may and this is just gorgeous it's not like a dewy face mist or anything this for me is like refreshing um it's not one of the ones that you're going to notice over your makeup or anything but absolutely stunning product and it smells like a rose garden oh i think i'm gonna do my makeup first i don't know why i always feel like doing my makeup first makes me feel like ready for the day i do have a new foundation to try as well this is the guerlain paris terracotta le tente and it looks like they've selected my perfect shade, which is amazing. If there is one brand that I'm like, their foundations are so underrated, it is, well, I feel like, maybe it's me, I don't know. Like, do you not feel like the beauty world is so different? Like, there's these stunning brands and TikTok almost doesn't see any of them. I feel like, it's so weird like I see all of these brands that I've never heard of before that are very like new and indie which I love I love seeing like new brands coming up but like these brands are so beautiful and the history and heritage I did a shoot for Guerlain in uh, Paris once and we went to their flagship on the Champs-Elysees and when I tell you just being there and learning about the brand it was truly truly magical so very excited to try this foundation. I love the tagline for this foundation as well, by the way. It is something like a perfect looking complexion as if you've spent the entire day in the open air. And that is something that I am always trying to recreate on the days that I don't get out in the open air. It's got 95% natural ingredients and it's supposed to give the lightness and the sort of airiness of a powder foundation with 24 hour wear as well. So um, I think let's give it a try. As always, I go in first with my By Terry Brightening CC Serum. Um, this at the moment, because it's summer, I go in with like three pumps because I am intense <laughs> this product has been in my um makeup bag for as long as i have been on youtube and i still love it as much now as i did then it's such a good product and i just love the way that it looks and feels on my skin quite honestly often i won't wear anything else i'll just kind of spot conceal and use this because it looks beautiful but i'm feeling a bit of foundation today so let's let's go with it now let's go for the test now i would usually mix whatever liquid foundation i'm using with some by terry cc just to give it that goldy glow i'm gonna do it the way that i normally would oh i like the how small the pump is is that it telling me that i don't need any more i'm just gonna a little bit more let's see how we go with this little pump of that oh maybe it didn't need the by terry so it's super lightweight i'm used to a, a heavier sort of not heavier but more coverage but what i'll tend to do is i'll mix it in with the by terry and then when i use it on my complexion um with a brush, I don't mix it. Let's try it with a brush. Okay, pop it on the back of my hand. So it's definitely a nice buildable. That is one of my eyebrows. Buildable foundation. There we go. 
Okay, under eye, I'm gonna go in with with the Banana Low Lighter from Rodial. Everything is always very illuminating with me and this is just, like it sets your under eye alight. It is so illuminating. If anyone has a hack for not getting foundation in your eyebrows but still having a seamless blend, let me know. <laughs> By the way, if you can't tell, it is absolutely miserable today. It is like a winter's day. For my bronzer, I am using the Rodial Glass, Bronze Glass Powder, Bronzing Glass Powder. So good, so good for a natural, like blurred look. And you know what I'm like, I'm kind of very faff free with beauty. I kind of just want it to just do its job. <laughs> I don't wanna to have to faff with things and this is exactly, exactly what I love about beauty, like fuss free beauty. Then, because I'm using proper foundation, I would often go in with my Super Cheek from Beauty Pie. It doesn't move anything around on your face, but I just like that for more of a fresh faced feel, whereas this feels a little bit more of a like high coverage look. So I'm gonna go in with the Shantakai uh, Wild Meadow Blush in Apple Blossom, as you can see. I have used this a lot, I love it. It's got a little touch of like radiance to it whilst also being super fresh and so pretty. Like that subtle. Now in my usual spot, I'm gonna use the Rodial Glass Powder just to dab. In this area, because we don't want it to look sweaty. Well, I'm really enjoying how the foundation feels at the moment. Um, it feels like it's secure, but comfortable, which is interesting. Uh, I'm then going to curl my eyelashes with the Tweezerman eyelash curlers. And I always do this before I do eyeliner, usually when I remember, because I like to just let them drop just a little. But they look a little bit more natural, just you get that intensity and then just whoo, calm a little bit. Otherwise you're like <laughs> um, And I'm using the Swede Dusty Brown Eyebrow Pencil and I keep this super sharp because I don't want it to look like I'm wearing eye eyeliner. I want it to look like I'm awake. And I've got a good amount of sleep, not. I don't want it to look like I'm wearing loads of makeup, so I just, smudge it into the lash line, super close, and then just very, very subtly wing it out. And we go in with mascara. I'm using the Swede, the Cloud Mascara. However, I've run out of my usual Swede Pro Lash because um, I do love that one, but this is sort of like always my backup. Their mascaras are insane, like literally insane. I don't know how they've changed the game so, like in this day and age, I always say it because I feel like beauty is just so impressive. Like it just keeps going. And to know that you can still come to the beauty market and sort of do something as good as this, I think that's really cool. They're such a lovely brand to work with as well. Like it's, you get really like, one of the things I've always said is like feedback from like the people that you're working with is not always easy but you have, have these few businesses that do it well. Like when I worked with Tweezerman, the actual like head of the, the brand reached out and thanked me himself. Um, the owner of Swede regularly messages me and I just think it's such a lovely personal, personal touch. If there is one thing, one thing that I have been asked endlessly over the last few weeks um, when it comes to beauty, it's what I've been wearing on my lips and <laughs> you will be very upset to know. You'll be very upset to know that A, I can't find it. <laughs> and 
B, oh no I do, it's here. Yeah, it's a lab sample because I am working on something. So I can't show you, oh no, that's not the right one. That's one of the testers. This one, this is it. So this is the color that I have been wearing on my lips, mostly. If not, I tell you what I'm wearing. But what I wanted to sort of develop was a beautiful corally balm that actually has a bit more staying power than a balm and also a bit more intensity than just a normal tinted balm. I wanted to create the perfect, like, the perfect lip color to sort of illuminate the face, really bring like intrigue and um, a pop of color, but not too intense. It's, it's for the girl that doesn't really love wearing lipstick because I worry about it going all over my face, but still doesn't want to compromise on not being able to wear color. So this is what I've been wearing, but I also have a lab sample to test today. So you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. This lip liner is the main reason why I'm doing a full face today, by the way, because I'll only really wear a lip liner if um, I'm doing a full face. Just to like, it kind of makes everything pop, but it also, it makes me feel a bit pouty sometimes. So I really don't like the sort of overdone lips anymore, which is obviously this is this was my look. When I first started on YouTube, the overdone lip was my look. But this is sort of like a, a natural lip color that, do you see that it sort of gives it, you could just add a little bit of balm to this. Oh, so rather than, let me just pop some, a little touch of lip balm over the top. What have we got in the way of a balm? Now this has a little bit of color, a little bit of a pinky color to it, but used sparingly, it actually. Now, I'm thinking this more for like, a sort of transitional autumnal look rather than spring summer. But I love, the, oh my gosh. This is so freaking gorgeous. I've not even finished my makeup, hold on, I need to show you this. I've done like my highlighter yet, I've not finished my mascara, but look at that color. Just a little bit of that lip liner, 110% approved, wow. Love that as like a summer to autumn hint of, of color for your lips, but it isn't too intense and has that depth and that warmth of like autumnal hues. Think of this with like a tweed jacket. Oh, approved. For my highlighter, an oldie but a goodie. It's my Beauty Pie uh, Triple Beauty Luminizing Wand. Now this is, it's had better days. <laughs> um, it kind of, started leaking. Um, my other one didn't, but it, this one, I think it was on the flight. Onto my finger, onto the back of my hand, warm it up. This is a trick I got from Alex. Warm it up and then I pat it into the skin. Because I don't want that like, I don't want that sort of intense highlight. I want that, ooh. She looks glowy. So that is what we're going for. And down the nose as well. You always gotta get a little bit down there because I always like it to hit just there. That is things up close and personal. I think I could have done with an extra layer of mascara, but I didn't do it. I always feel like my lips look a little bit intense when I put lip liner on <laughs> oh gosh okay that's that done looks like there's been an explosion of beauty products which is always a good sign now it is time 
for hair so i'm going to plait one side of my hair just to keep it out of the way and under wraps And you might be shocked to know that recently I have not been using my £25 uh, Babyliss curling tongue. I'm back using my GHD, trusty GHD uh, Platinum Plus. And the only other thing I was going to try maybe, because you might have noticed that I'm doing my hair slightly differently and I'm keeping it off my face at the moment. Um, it's so weird seeing me with like not a corally lip on, but I kind of love it. What I was going to try and do is air wrap my fringe and see if like it gives it a bit more volume. But anyway, let's talk you through the first section. So what I do is I go super thin with my sections and I use my straighteners to create the waves. Now I used to do this when my hair was really long before. Um, I think it gives a nicer look for longer hair. I wasn't, I wasn't able to create it with my shorter hair, but I think maybe it was user error rather than anything else. Um, turn them on. These are so old, like honestly used, lovingly used as usual. And because I've got my extensions at the moment, I don't need quite so much volume because my hair has so much volume with the extensions in. So I can like smooth and tame my unruly hair because people are always shocked when I say that I don't actually straighten my hair before curling, which I don't really, but just a few of these little bits and pieces around the nape of my neck, I do give them a once over. Please excuse the state of this brush as well. This was one of the things that was smashed in my suitcase on the way to Italy, was it? I can't remember now. Um, and the same for my hair oil so um yeah but i bought another one but i just still use it because it still works and that is basically what i do just a little demonstration again so i just pull and then wrap it over, pull, and then wrap it over, and do that right to the end of my hair. And it just creates these looser waves, which doesn't feel quite so pageant, pageant hair. <laughs> so I'm not going to time lapse it so that you can actually see it, but I am just going to show you a few little um, bits and pieces of me doing it so you can see the technique. So this piece is my natural hair, and again, I just do the same thing. It's like scoring a ribbon is how I would describe it. been concentrating so much on the fact that I've been doing my hair. I've not been listening to my book. Um, I thought I would let you know what book I'm listening to at the moment, which I'm actually really, really enjoying. Um, it's a new Brene Brown one. It is called Braving the Wilderness, the quest to be, the quest for true belonging and the courage to stand alone. I'll link in the description box down below. Defining story of how I saw myself a young, lonely, not shiny girl standing hopelessly in front of a gym door, scouring a poster for confirmation that she belongs somewhere. The goal of Grounded Theory is to develop theories asked, what are people trying to achieve? What are they worried about? The answer was surprisingly complex. That is my hair finished using the Michael Van Clark 10 second transformation balm just to get all of my little flyaways at the front and smooth everything down. Ready because I have my call in five minutes. We had last week and I, I still feel quite attached to it. The border and the way that the tiger story sounds just to 
to me feels really confident. The thing that I'm good at is knowing something special. Like, I think that that's what I'm really good at. Like, when I work with clients, I'm like, that piece, that's epic. Like, that's gonna sell. I know that that's gonna sell. I'm not so much good at the, like, that's where I'm, I'm like, I feel unconfident because I haven't had that moment where I'm like, that's it. I like balance, not symmetry, if that makes any kind of sense. And so it's like, creating the feeling of wilderness that still, you know, you've not got a huge amount of blank space or anything like that, but it's, it all looks perfectly imperfect. <laughs> well, I have finished up my design meeting and no, this is not, it's not a Karen Millen design meeting. That was a very different design meeting because I basically had a bit of a like panic over the weekend um, over something and I just wanted to like, I wanted to nail that and I feel like we made such good pro progress in that um, meeting. Also, I feel like I'm having a good hair day which makes me not want to put my hair back in my new twists. I feel like I need to save those for when I'm having a bad hair day. Um, and I'm having a good one today, even though tomorrow I'm having it toned, so yes. Anyway, I was loving my, my makeup on the call. I'm sure they probably thought I was looking at myself all the time, but I was like, my makeup looks so good today. And I, I just think that like everything I'm doing with my skin and then finding products that I love is working, which makes me super happy. Um, I'm finishing off my coffee now and I'm um, gonna crack on with a bit of editing, a bit of research and then get the house ready for Ali to come home because the day has just got away with me. It's already nearly three o'clock, oh my gosh. That was a long old design call. I am still sat in my office with my laptop. You can see the glare on my face. Mr. Millen Gordon is two hours delayed on his flight and I have been editing for the most part of the afternoon. It is now 6.30 and I just have one piece of work left to finish, which is um, a voiceover for um, a TikTok. So I'm gonna get that recorded, then I'm gonna hopefully um, focus on some dinner, some organization, getting myself ready for London tomorrow, and then kissing some very rotund sausage dog bellies all evening. No, actually, do you know what I want to do? I want to continue listening to my Brené Brown, Bre Bre Brené Brown book. It's so good. Like, it's so good. I honestly, I feel like she could be like reading my autobiography because it's all about belonging as someone like me. I think you'll probably find this to be a bit of a shock, but like, I have never felt like I belong. Um, and that's, that honestly puts like a lump in my throat, but I'm not gonna cry because I cry all the time. But I, I don't think I've ever felt like I belonged and nobody ever made it make more sense then when I went for um, coffee with um, a friend who is in the industry and she said something to me that really, like it stuck with me since that day. She was like, Lydia, you're a dolphin that look, no, this is what she said. She said, Lydia, there are two types of people in this world. There are dolphins and there are sharks and you are a dolphin that looks like a shark and nothing has ever made more sense to me in my life. And so I've just, I don't think I've ever fitted in. So I think even like at times in my life, like I've, I've tried to like fit in with the, the sharks and I don't fit in with the sharks, but I also don't really fit in with the dolphins either. And I met a group of girls at the weekend and they were very, very clearly dolphins and I actually fit in with them for once, <laughs> which isn't often the case because a lot of dolphins end up being like worried because they think I'm a shark. I hope that makes sense and is also respectful to both sharks and dolphins. But yeah, so this is this this book is all about belonging and she could honestly be reading my my life story, not necessarily so much about like her parents and things like that, but definitely just just that sense of not feeling part of something. Even now, when I sit in front of you with nearly a million on YouTube, a million on TikTok, a million on Instagram, I never feel like I'm part of something because I've always felt like even the odd one out 
in the influencer space. Like I've always been the odd one out. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not the same, but not in like the I'm special <laughs> type of way. I'm just different. And I think that's what I mean whenever I've said, like I feel like an alien. Like I just always feel different. And I also, feel like I have levels of empathy that like most people don't have. And so it's, if you have maybe felt similar, I think you might enjoy this book. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my calligraphy set out and I'm gonna listen to my book um, and do some calligraphy with the sausage dogs. Um, but I do have to get this voiceover done first. So without me talking about myself and talking about woe is me all the time, I'm gonna do my voiceover, okay. Let's do this. I actually don't know how I record this and it'd be like nice. Ah, oh, here we go. Right. Okay, let's do this. I am finished for the day and you can tell that I have been stuck at my computer all day because my eyes literally look like this. <laughs> the boys are just having their dinner. I have a candle burning. This is one of the candles from Le Bougie, which is an Irish company. I stupidly stuck it in this pot and now I can't get it out. But this is their honeysuckle and sea salt candle. And when I tell you that this blows all other summer candles out of the water, I mean it. Ali walked in and he could smell it just sat on the side and he was like, first of all, that candle is so strong. Second of all, it's probably one of the loveliest candles I've ever smelt. It is incredible. I need this like in stock at all times in my house, just not in this stupid thing that I've done here. It's got stuck in the wax that was left over. I don't know why I did that, what an idiot. But best candle ever. Oh, boys out for wee wee. As I mentioned, it is a very, very miserable day here in England. This is English uh, weather for you. So it's so cold, I'm actually gonna light the fire. Ali will be home a bit later, so I'd like it to be quite warm and cozy. Yes, I'm filming my dogs whilst they have their tinkles. <laughs> Hello, Bucky. <laughs> That's so cute. We don't like the wet. We don't, we don't like it. I'm very, very thankful to have been in the house all day because this weather has not been it. I've got this little hot water bottle keeping me warm whilst the fire is on. And I have found myself in a wild part of TikTok, okay? I have found myself on BookTok and BookTok is wild. And that is two things that I never thought that I would say. <laughs> And I, I honestly think that this is the epitome of today's culture. So what I first came across was this really um, lovely girl's video where she was basically explaining that she's been getting hate for following someone. Forty, you don't have to give me some love, okay? I'm very, very grateful. She'd been getting a lot of hate for following someone on TikTok. And I thought, my gosh, like what's this person done for her to, for her to be getting hate for just following him? So I then searched the um, thing underneath the thing and I found myself on this very cute boy um, on TikTok, very clearly a lot younger than me. So I'm saying cute is the operative word. Like he would, he looks like he would be a very, you know, um, what's the word? Like he, he would be the heartthrob in a movie, that kind of thing. I'm so old. And um, anyway, He's basically started sharing his love of books on his TikTok, but he's cute. So he's 
instantly, like his first video went viral because people are like, why is this cute guy not you, Porty, even though you are very cute. You should be on BookTok. You should. You should. No, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't know why you're doing that. I'm only paying you some attention. Anyway. And. Do you mind, you two? Oh, God. Oh, stop it. Enough. Enough. Oh, did you hear his tongue slap my chin? He's like a lizard. Anyway, so BookTok has gone wild and basically bullying this guy for doing absolutely nothing. And I feel like this, you see this happen a lot on the internet at the moment. Maybe not even at the moment. I'm pretty sure that this is what happens is that it's just such a weird thing. Like I've been seeing it happen recently where like someone says something and regardless of the actual facts, just as it spreads, it just gets wilder and wilder and wilder. And I've realized that it's this world, like the internet has a lot of bullying that happens. And I always feel really petulant when I say that because I feel like the term bullying is thrown around a lot unnecessarily. And we call it like a mob mentality. But if this was happening at school, like just put this in the context of happening in school or happening in the workplace. If something like this was to start happening, you would need somebody to step in and say, this has to stop because this is disgusting. But because there is no one doing that on the internet. It just keeps happening. And so like something will happen, like someone will put out a video about someone. And by the time you get to the end of, or you, you know, been served this, this content, because once you sort of show time to a piece of content, you start seeing more and more of it. But like, I've just seen the accusations get wilder and wilder, but bearing in mind, I know I've watched the first video and that's not what was said in, it's just wild. It's wild. It's like Chinese whispers on crack. And I've got to be honest, it's starting to feel uncomfortable what's happening online at the moment. And I've always, always said this, but I, I think like something bad is going to happen. And it's just somebody needs to step in. Something needs to step in. And it's not happening. And I've seen a few things like popping up that are like supposedly gonna regulate, but that looked like a very British thing. And this is a, a worldwide thing. And I just don't, I, I, it's, it's really worrying. I am one of those people though, that always wants to like come to people's defense. Please don't put your mum in my face. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Oh, Marky, no, no. Thank you. <laughs> it's a puppy royal rumble. But yeah, I just, it's starting to feel really bad. It is starting to feel really bad seeing this stuff. I need to get myself onto a, a good algorithm, it, but in the same breath, I feel like then I know that it's going on and I'm choosing to ignore it. And it's just, yeah, it's a weird, weird world. And that's enough of that chat. <laughs> good morning, everyone. I am in my dressing room, I'm dressed, and I'm ready to head to London for the day. I am wearing a very, very cute outfit, probably overdressed, but my new favorite saying is, being alive is my special occasion and I intend to dress accordingly. So I am wearing my Susanna London skirt. I don't want this to be the only time that I wear this. Um, like, I don't want winter time to be the only time that I wear this skirt because it's got such gorgeous structure. So I've teamed it with a silk, lily silk shirt. I kind of want this in like a cotton, like my Ralph Lauren dress, but a shirt, um, so that there's more structure on the collar. I've got vintage Susan Kaplan earrings, um, Emmy London shoes, and I've twillied on my bag, um, which I think actually might be too much, but who cares? Is it blue overload? I'm just, I haven't decided yet. I need to actually do the other twilly as well, but I'm heading down to London today. I've got a meeting with the wedding edition, which I'm so excited about. You, you know that I went to one of their events recently and had just the loveliest time with them. Um, and we're just planning some things and just, yeah, really, really exciting stuff. So 
gonna go and meet with them. And then I'm getting my hair toned with Immy and then I've got an event. I'm going to my friend Ree's brand launch. Oh my gosh, I am so, so proud of her. She's basically created the most incredible brand for, for everyone, but also for like kind of focusing at um, the more mature woman because I think for a long time, I think that more mature women have felt a little bit invisible in the beauty industry. And if there's one thing that Rhee does well is she is championing, championing that. She looks fantastic and she's all about the glow. So I'm super excited to experience her brand for the first time and uh, just go and celebrate with her as well because we always joke whenever we see each other that we are each other's um, therapy dog. <laughs> Because we just like cling to each other at events and we're like... <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go and wash my hands because they're a little bit sticky with all of the product on them. Um, and I'll link my outfit in the description box down below. But let's go. Another thing I haven't told you is our chicken coop is being built today. We've got the NFJ guys here and they are building the protective area around um, the chicken coop. So what will happen is our chickens will roam freely for the most part in our garden during the daytime, but um, at nighttime they will go to sleep in their, in their little um, coop. But the door will be locked at nighttime to protect them from foxes. However, if we're not here, they will be able to, in the daytime, um, roam around in the enclosed, like enclosure around the coop. So they'll always have space. They'll always have an area for them to like roam in. It's just at nighttime, they will be in their little coop. And if you, if you don't know, chickens tend to sort of sit in one spot when they're in their coop and just huddle up and go to bed. And then in the morning, we have this beautiful aut automatic door on the side and they'll just be able to stroll out. Um, so the guys are working hard. We're putting in more oak posts um, to match in with everything. And we've got a lovely gate going on as well. So that should we finish this week, but I really hate to say things like that because it usually lands me in hot water and it doesn't happen. I'm also not going to go out there and disturb them because they are um, cracking on and, oh, Porty, do you want to go out? But Porty, when I let you out in the garden, you often tell people off for doing things and your tail looks like you're up to mischief. Do you need a wee or do you just want to tear shish up? <laughs> I think you just want to cause trouble, to be honest. Mr. Millen Gordon is back in the house, working away in his little wab rabbit warren in here. Wabbit warren. Um, what are you doing? Oh, you've got an event this evening, haven't you, as well? Okay, cool. Well, I will leave you to it. I, my taxi should be here soon. What do you think of my outfit? Do you like it? Yeah, it's nice, very nice. Don't like it? Yeah, I think it's lovely. It's all um, beetles. Beetles aren't blue. Stripey. Beetle? You think beetle juice? Beetle juice. The film, Be Beetlejuice. I don't know why I'm thinking Beetles. No, I don't know why you're thinking Beetles. What, what are the mints? They've got lines on them, haven't they? Humbugs. <laughs> humbugs. <laughs> Nothing, but humbug. Nothing but like a humbug. What are you, always little moments of insight into Ali's brain, although he's probably very tired because he's just back from um, a trip. Milano. Milano, where you and Lauren have been hanging Tutto out and I've bene. been very, very jealous. Tutto bene. I kept on saying Tutto bene to everyone. Good, that's a good thing. It's a positive thing to say. Tutto bene. It's all good. Tutto bene. Anyway. Ellis Street, Ellis. please. Thank you. Ellis Street. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, you too. Bye bye. So I have just finished up my meeting with the wedding edition, the lovely Kendra, and it took me one hour to get from Euston Station to the Corinthia, and that has never happened to me before. There is such bad uh, traffic today, which is an absolute nightmare, um, but we still got to have lunch, and I don't know if you can tell, but I definitely had a glass of champagne with Kendra, which is just essential. And I also met the wonderful Alice from the Corinthia as well, which was so, so good. Um, I'm now in my taxi after um, leaving the Corinthia. I'm on my way to have my hair toned and i um, going to go and see Immy. And then I've got my event this evening. So all good. I also bumped into um, Steph, which was so wonderful. She was there with her boyfriend, Lewis. And I was like, I feel like I know you. This is so weird. You know, like, 
when you follow someone that closely and um, you like know everything about them, even like their partner. And it's so weird. I was like meeting Lewis. I was like, I definitely, I definitely know you. But um, yeah, such a great meeting and heading to get my hair done. Bit of spray. Yeah, I'll have whatever you want me to have. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm just gonna... <laughs> 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 but that's all thanks to you though and it, it honestly means so much to me that you're here and supporting me and I, I was saying earlier I've never asked anyone to do anything for me and, and I have now and I can it's amazing that you've that you've stood up and been here for me so that's great. it anyway you know when you know there's stuff that just makes me feel old and I just don't want to feel old and I don't want to feel invisible as well I don't see myself very often in mm. advertising and I just want to change that because I feel like there's it's so important to feel like when you spend your money you're getting something from someone who understands where you are and you're like all ages I just don't want to feel unwelcome when I buy something from a brand no, don't even try it, Lily Pebbles. No, get out of here. You've been in it. Not getting there. <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Nice try. Run out, of nice try. <laughs> Run out of You've got loads in the bank. I've seen you getting dressed. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen you getting dressed. No, I mean pretending to get dressed. <laughs> Wait. 